Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna be talking about Bella Thorne and once again, she has gotten herself into hot water due to OnlyFans, due to rather what she said about OnlyFans and her involvement with OnlyFans. It's a mess as always. My dog is here again. Can I help you? Before we get into that though, I did want to thank today's sponsor, which is NordVPN. A VPN is a virtual private network, and that means you create a secure connection online. Using NordVPN means that I can browse the internet safely as Nord has military grade encryption, as well as an automatic kill switch. If you go to nordvpn.com slash ready to glare and use code ready to glare during this holiday season, every purchase of two year plans gets you 68% off plus four additional months for free. While NordVPN is securing your online safety, it's also useful to have for fun things like access to streaming sites that may not be available in your country or to check out the catalogs other countries offer. Again, remember to go to nordvpn.com slash ready to glare and use code ready to glare to get 68% off a two year plan and four additional free months. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's just do a quick recap on what has occurred thus far because if you don't know the first part of the story, this won't make sense. Back in August, Bella Thorne came under a significant amount of fire because she started an OnlyFans. Now, granted on OnlyFans, a lot of the content is not safe for work content, a lot of it is lewd or nude, um, but you can post whatever you want on there, right? The thing is, the way she advertised her content didn't really align with reality. In fact, there was a particular picture that she said was nude, and it was a pay-per-view picture, so on top of the subscription, I think you had to pay, it was $200 for that nude picture and basically what ended up happening was that her content that she claimed was nude or somewhere near that wasn't actually and the pictures were akin to what she posted on Instagram which obviously is free so people are like what like what are we paying for and it wasn't even about the pictures being similar to Instagram's pictures as much as it's like false advertising because if I tell you I'm gonna give you a service or a certain type of content and you decide to pay for that content and then you don't get it, understandably people will be mad, you know? It would be the equivalent of signing up for a streaming website and then once you pay it, it's like, oh, actually you can't stream and it's like, okay, well, where did my money go essentially? But on top of that, Bella Thorne racked up over a million dollars within the first week of doing it. I believe even in a day, she made more than a million dollars, which is insane. But what occurred after that is really the central point of focus because it fucked over a lot of the actual sex workers on OnlyFans was that OnlyFans implemented a cap. So you couldn't tip more than a certain amount anymore. And people were mad because it's like, why would you put a cap? Like if someone wants to tip you $200, they should be free to do that. But because of Bella Thorne, essentially OnlyFans changed their rules. And now it also appears that the max pay-per-view price is $50. Let's remember she charged $200 for that quote-unquote nude picture. Basically, sex workers ended up paying the price for her actions because they were the ones penalized who were losing out on money. Let's also remember that these other people who might be very well relying for the sex work, having that difference in payment could cost them their livelihood, whereas Bella Thorne has a complete other career. The other thing she did, which people thought was also a way to backtrack or justify herself, was she said that her joining OnlyFans was part of a research she was doing in order to understand the experience or something along those lines. And she said that she was working with a man named Sean Baker, saying that they were gonna make content out of her quote unquote research. But then at the end of August, Sean Baker said that he'd had a conversation with Bella Thorne. He also said that he had advised her to consult actual sex workers about, you know, whatever questions or research she wanted to do, because obviously they've lived it and would know and would be a very valuable resource that we know of she didn't do that. So the research thing didn't really come off as super genuine as much as it was like, okay, now you're you're trying to justify something that you're being critiqued for. All of this said and done. So she posted a couple of Instagram stories, which I thought were questionable upon first seeing them. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, was this necessary? So the first one says, everyone jumping on OnlyFans, but I took the hit for doing it first, cool. And then she said, legit everyone in my newsfeed following in my footsteps, but when I was getting heat, y'all were scared. You're so stupid. 
stupid. The reason why a lot of people weren't happy about this is because back when she'd had that initial scandal, she apologized and said, I wanted to bring attention to the site. The more people on the site, the more likely a chance to normalize the stigmas and in trying to do this, I hurt you. Blah, blah, blah. Here is like the rest of what she tweeted. And so if you're gonna apologize for something, even though most big celebrity influencer apologies are strategic PR moves and not really because they're sorry, it comes off as extremely hypocritical to then turn around and be like, oh, like I started this OnlyFans trend before I did it. You know, it wasn't as popular, blah, blah, blah. And granted, she did bring publicity to OnlyFans. Surely any big name that joins or mentions it will give it publicity. That being said, she is by no means the only celebrity or even the biggest celebrity to have mentioned OnlyFans at all. Like Beyonce mentioned OnlyFans, there are plenty of people who are bigger and more significant in the entertainment world who have mentioned it and they don't need to go on these kind of weird egocentric <laughs> rants, I guess. If you're gonna apologize for essentially fucking up certain people's livelihoods and then you're gonna turn around and be like, oh, I started this trend, girl, you did not invent sex work. Sex work existed long before either of us were even fucking born. So to even think that you are that important in the grand scope of people's lives, like random ass people in the street, like if you think you are that impactful on people's choice to do sex work, the absolute ego of it all is insane to me. And it's also like, you're essentially retracting your apology. So you pretty much just need to pick what side you're on at this point, because it's like, okay, do you apologize for fucking up people's livelihoods and fucking up a website? Or are you this trailblazer that just invented sex work. Like she invented the whole profession, guys. I'm sorry to break it to you. Like, you need to pick one. Frankly, I'm not either a fan or a non-fan of Bella Thorne, like I don't really consider myself anything, mainly because I've never watched any of her content, never really listened to any of her music, never anything she's partaken in, I have not seen, so there's no real reason for me to defend or not defend her. But in this particular situation, it just, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth and it's, it's just kind of like, okay, well, you can't just flip flop on, you know, are you sorry or not? I personally don't like that. It doesn't come off as genuine. And aside from that, I also think the amount of self-importance is astounding. Then again, this is a, someone who also dated Tana. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always. And let's get right into the fan art.